So I wanted to talk a little bit about mathematics and what it is. Because the most common comment I get is, I don't understand the math. Or, when somebody's criticising something, they'll say there's not enough math in there, so it can't be true. So that idea that mathematics is somehow special is one thing that pervades our entire society. Now, I watched a film called Interstellar recently, where the professor had been working on a board for 20 years to get his equation to work. If his equation worked, then somehow, magically, a rocket ship would work and he could save humanity. So he slogged over this equation. And that's a concept we have about mathematics, is that mere mortal men can't possibly understand mathematics. And mathematics is an amazingly complex thing that can have a mysterious effect on the real world. And there's a lot of confusion around mathematics. And mathematics actually comes down to three really simple points. One, it is a language and nothing more. Two, it developed historically, just like language did. And three, it is not magical. In normal language, we use words. We use words to describe things and their relationships and concepts and ideas and how they interact with each other. And we do that through a set of rules that we understand to be grammar. So in English, to say man eats fish is very different than saying fish eats man. In one, you're going to a restaurant, in the other one, you're caught in a Jaws film. So the order of words in English convey meaning, and of course that order is governed by the grammar. The grammar is nothing but a social construct. It happens to be that way around, and we call it subject-verb-object in English. But other languages use subject-object-verb. As long as the group of people who are using that rule understand that rule, then meaning can be transmitted. So the laws of grammar are not unchangeable laws, they're just laws that we've worked out as a big group so we can pass meaning using words. And words look at only that selection of things, that is, the relationship, ideas and concepts of things. Maths, as a language, looks at a different idea. What it looks at is shape, size and order. And that is mathematics. Mathematics is the language of shape, size and order. Language is the language of the relationship of things, ideas and concepts. As all languages, the words have specific significance. So we have things like nouns, which are the name of things, and verbs, which are actions. And in mathematics, we have absolutely the same thing. We have things that are like nouns, that we call number, and then things that are like verbs, which is things like plus and minus and divide. In English, we say something like man eats fish has significance. In other languages, you just say something like man fish eats has exactly the same significance. Mathematics is a little bit more universal, but the reason we say 2 plus 2 equals 4 and not 2 comma 2 plus equals 4 is purely a grammar. We make it up. There's no reason that it's like that. It's just made up, flows that way, and if you want to know mathematics, you have to learn that. Of course, if you want to know any language, you have to learn it. Even the language you speak right now, your native tongue, at some stage or other, you had to learn it. And of course, you learnt it at that stage when you had absolutely no embarrassment and you've completely forgotten about. When you're sort of that three to six months old and you're quite happy to sit in your nappy and <laughs> pee and poop yourself, and you're going ga 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 ga, and your mum's going da 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 da, ma 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 ma, very patiently, you learn to speak. By the time you're sort of about three, you're actually pretty good. By the time you're five, you're really quite fluent. But that period in which you learnt to do that, you had absolutely no embarrassment at all. You would just go and do it. By the time you get to about 11 or 12, and you maybe go to school and you're going to learn French or German, then you suffer from social embarrassment. Now, uh, I, I don't have that to the same extent as a lot of people, so I'm quite happy to speak a foreign language, even though I speak it badly. Now, I speak actually quite passable Spanish and Italian, pretty terrible German, and really god-awful Russian and Japanese. Whenever I visit a Latin country, oh, I don't speak French, incidentally. Whenever I visit a Latin company, country, I will make a horrible sentence that's half Spanish, half Italian, and be understood. My wife will actually try to grammatically correctly construct those sentences, and so I'll have got everything across and got what we want, while she's still trying to form the sentence. 
because she suffers much more from social embarrassment than I do, and so it's much harder for her. Now, we all suffer from social embarrassment when it comes to doing these things, even if we're going to learn a foreign language. And that can be a big um, block to learning mathematics. When you're learning mathematics, you are essentially learning a foreign language. It's, a, it's a absolutely identical with learning that foreign language. So you have no choice. You have to learn it. And of course, at school, we're taught it in perhaps the worst way possible. We have half an hour to learn something that it took us three months to learn as a baby. And if you get it wrong, somebody will tell you off for having get it wrong. Or you'll be demarked and you'll be at the bottom of the class and all that sort of stuff. So you're put into a situation where it's extremely difficult for you to do that, but you're still expected to do it. And so the way mathematics tends to be taught is not as a language, but as a complete rote with no significance for, ever, uh, for anything. Even things simple as two plus two. You'll do page after page after page of two plus two, two plus three, four plus four. And you remember your times table when you just recited it in a sing-song kind of way? It didn't mean anything to you. It was just words you were reciting until they stuck in there. So word taught mathematics without meaning. Now, we don't learn language without meaning. We learn language with meaning at the same time. Your mum sits there, she points at your father, and she goes, da, 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 da. And you learn the word and the significance and the meaning all at the same time. With mathematics, you are stripped of the meaning. And because you're stripped of the meaning and you're doing it by rote, it becomes incredibly difficult to learn. And then, of course, you're expected to know it throughout the rest of your life and suffer social embarrassment when you don't. Now, words and language don't arise spontaneously out of mid-air because we need them or because they're useful. They're actually a social construct. They're something that we develop along the time. Now, before the discovery of Australia, the English language did not contain the word for kangaroo. That didn't make people stupid. That just meant that there was absolutely no need for the word kangaroo. Why would you need it? It's never in your experience. And of course, the sailors went there, saw these kangaroos and thought, oh, we need a word for that. And they had a word kangaroo. Now, we think of language as being something static. We think of it as never developing, that it's fixed. But actually, it's far from the truth. Language is in constant change. The verb to Google didn't exist before the internet. It couldn't exist before the internet. And now it's a verb used every day all over the place. There are so many words that come into use that the Oxford English Dictionary actually produces four updates to the dictionary every year and enters at least a thousand plus words, new words, into the dictionary because language is continually developing. Language is a product of our history and our society and our development. Now, it doesn't mean we go from stupid to clever. It means that what we need to express in our social and economic condition changes through time. We don't get any smarter, we just need to talk about different things. Now, number is perhaps one of the very basic nouns that um, mathematics needs in order to talk about shape, size and order. And we think that number is something that is intuitive to us. For instance, there's 10 supercapacitors right there. Didn't even think about it. We put a number on it because we do that because we've had centuries of needing to do that and we've had centuries of developing the ability to do that. Now, there is an infamous tribe in the Amazon called the Para appear Anha, who can only count one too many. Now, it's sometimes put in sociological reports that this makes them somehow more like babies. But I would contend the only reason they do that is because they have no need of any greater number. The number zero, for instance, only came into existence in about the 9th or 10th century, because why would you bother to count when you didn't have anything? There was no need for a zero. There wasn't anything to count. You wouldn't count it. So zero came into being actually quite late in the day. And the concept of many, we can laugh at you, one, two, many, ho, ho, ho. But we have that concept. That's what infinity is. When the number gets so big that it no longer makes any sense to you, we use many. Because we call it infinity, but it's actually just the concept of many. Because our need to count and our need for number has got beyond two. But when it gets beyond a Googleplex or so, or so, it just becomes infinity because it doesn't need it. It doesn't mean anything. It just becomes many. 
And I would agree that I would suggest that the Amazonian um, tribe doesn't need any numbers beyond two. Well, why would they? There's no trade that goes on there. There's nothing that they need to count to that degree. So there's an infinity, which is just how it happens to be greater than two. Our infinity happens to be greater than a few Googleplex. So I would argue that the basic noun of mathematics, number, is rooted in the social condition and in the history of our development more than anything else. It's not intrinsic to itself, it's just something that's rooted in our experience. And if we look at the tools that we use in mathematics, so for instance geometry. Geometry was big in Greece. It was big in Greece because the landed class had absolutely nothing else to do. And so they would argue about various geometrical problems. And Pythagoras considered, or was it Aristotle? Anyway, one of these guys, considered that the triangle was a fundamental truth. And there were four kinds of triangle, just like there was earth, wind, fire, and water. And each triangle was associated with one of these fundamental elements. And they would argue endlessly about this nature of the triangle. But they had no sense of time. Our sense of time, of course, is, is by the second. We're ruled by the clock. You have to get up at a certain time. You have to do a job. If you're working in science, you're going to be talking about microseconds. Time is an important concept to us. To the Greeks, time was a whole different concept. They would think in terms of seasons, as opposed to in terms of hours and seconds. So they had a problem. If you took a hare and a tortoise, and the hare could run 100 times faster than the tortoise, so you put the hare at the start line, you put the tortoise 100 yards up. When the hare had run that 100 yards, the tortoise would have run 10 yards. When the hare had run 10 yards, the tortoise would have run a yard. When the hare had run a yard, the tortoise would have run tenth of a yard. Because you're not looking at time, what would happen is that the hare would get closer and closer and closer to the tortoise, but never catch up. And of course, that is fundamentally nonsense, but a problem that troubled the Greeks. Now, we think of it as a bit different. We say to ourselves, well, that hare runs at 100 metres per second. The tortoise runs at 10 metres per second. So in the first second, the hares run 100 metres, the tortoises run 10 metres. In the second second, the tortoises run 200 metres, and the hares, uh, sorry, the hares run 200 metres, and the tortoises run 20 metres. So clearly, the hare will pass the tortoise. Now, we can resolve that issue really simply because we have a concept of time. But that concept of time doesn't make the Greeks more stupid than us. It just means that that sense of time wasn't a social or economic issue to the Greeks of the time, and so they never considered it. Now, geometry gave way to trigonometry, and geometry gave way to trigonometry when the triangle itself no longer mattered. What mattered was the relationships of the angles and the length of the sides of the triangles, and we could use that to do things like measure the distance from the sun, measure the size of the earth, measure where we were on the earth. And of course, at that time, people were sailing all over the place. And given the vagaries of wind, you could sail from land from a day. If you turned around, it might take you two days to get back. So knowing how far you'd sailed for a day didn't really help you. You needed to know how far in sea miles you'd sailed, and you used trigonometry to do that. And of course, trigonometry then dominated the mathematics until about the 17th century, when Newton or Leibniz came up with calculus, which looked at a different way. And these things, one is built upon the other. Trigonometry is clearly straight from geometry. And when trigonometry, which is a refined geometry, overtook it, it was able to explain over geometry. And Euclid began with something like 200 principles, of which only about 18 or 20 are still valid today, because the need for them changed. Our world changed, our economics, our social relationship, all of that changed. And because of that change, we needed greater measurement. We needed time. We needed to be able to deal with that in mathematics. And when I say deal with that in mathematics, what I mean is we needed a language that would describe shape, size, and order. And just like a normal language, when we need more words to describe a new situation, and we have a thousand words a day, of course the language of mathematics developed to reflect that change in what we were going through. Of course, when you see a mathematic proof, what you see is as a nice neat flow, ergo this, 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 there we go, bingo, we've got a result. But that didn't happen overnight. That took millennia. 
It took thousands of years for us to get to a concept of one too many to a concept of infinity. The idea of putting a zero in there took centuries. So if you're finding it difficult to get hold of a mathematical language, it's not really a surprise. It's the same way you try and get hold of a foreign language. You don't have the advantage of sitting on your mum's lap at three months. You don't have the advantage of a millennia behind you to help you. You've got to learn it relatively quickly. And of course, that's a very daunting task. But the thing that stops most people is not the height of the task itself. It's actually the idea that it's going to be difficult, which it's not going to be. It's going to be embarrassing, which it is going to be. And somehow it's magical. Now, magical thinking isn't something that's um, restricted to mathematics. It was predominant in language for a very long time and is still with us. The Harry Potter films are, and the Wizarding World films are all about that. You say these words in a particular way and waggle this little thing around and something will happen. Luminos, for instance, you'll get a light. Repario and your glasses will be fixed. You just have to say this special word in a special way. And then, magically, it will affect the real world. You'll get a, a, a light, or your glasses will be repaired, or a coffee cup will fill. Somehow, that arrangement of words will magically change the real world. And we had that. You had special scripts where you could write spells. The ancient Egyptians used to write words on a beaker, the name of their enemy and what they wanted to happen. For instance, penis fall off. And then we'd take this beaker and smash it. And that smashing of those words was supposed to affect their enemy and their enemy's penis would fall off. Of course, that never happened, but we still believed and invested magical thinking into words that somehow special words, a special arrangement and a special activity of them would somehow translate those words into a real world effect. Now, we may love the idea if only it were true. And yes, it would be great if we could wave a wand and say luminous and we had light. But we all really know that that's not going to happen. That the magical quality of words are restricted to Shakespeare and poetry as opposed to affecting the real world. They can affect our feelings and we can do something about that. But that still won't affect the real world in reality unless we do something about it. In which case we are the agent of change, not the words themselves. So words don't have that kind of power. But for some reason, we transfer that magical thinking onto mathematics. We think that mathematics, if arranged in a special way, will somehow make the rocket engine work. And if only we were in-depth knowledge enough of that, we could perform that same magic. Well, I hate to break this illusion, but it's the same illusion as a Harry Potter film. A language is able to describe something. When you can describe it well, you can communicate it in the same way if you speak English well or German well or Japanese well, you can communicate your ideas better. But you can't make something magically happen by doing that. By creating an equation, you will not start the rocket engine. It's the rocket engine not starting that is wrong, not the equation. Your equation fails to describe the rocket engine. If you describe that equation, it won't start the rocket engine. That magical relationship that we seem to think that mathematics has, it doesn't have. Because mathematics is only a language in the same way that English, French, German, Spanish, Japanese, Chinese, Russian are languages. They can describe a world. What they describe is the world of shape, size and order. And they do that with nouns and verbs of mathematics. Two. 5a x plus divide. Once you get hold of that language, then you will be able to speak mathematics. When you learn to speak mathematics, you'll learn to understand mathematics in the same way that if I say dinner is at five, where's the problem understanding that? None whatsoever. But that's only familiarity breeding contempt. Of course there is a priesthood of mathematics and we plan on pulling the curtain away. And of course no priest likes the curtain pulled away because you find it's a little old man operating the levers to create the Wizard of Oz. But I'm going to do a series of videos on mathematics and I want to do this introduction video mostly to point out that it is a language. It came up historically. It's not magical. Now, being a language, then yes, it's going to take some learning. And that learning really is going to be stopped mostly 
by social embarrassment more than anything else. If it's something you want to get hold of, just like if you want to get hold of German, then you have to practice it, you have to do it, you have to try it. If it's something you don't want to get hold of it and you're quite happy, no, I just don't understand maths, there's no problem with that. But don't invest maths with the kind of mysticism. And there's a problem with that because then you leave yourself open to magic. If you leave yourself open to magic, you leave yourself open to being fooled. So if nothing else, try to dis um, dissuade yourself or throw away the idea that is a, a mystical process involved in mathematics. It isn't. It's a language that describes shape, size, order. That's all there is to it. Anyway, I thought I would do this introduction just to sort of um, head up what I'm going to do on the mathematics video. I hope it helped. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.